Slippin' Friday with Crafting Cousins. Let's craft, y'all! Hey, y'all! It's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using four of these trays that I got at the Dollar Tree. A page from this calendar that I got at the Dollar Tree. Some Mod Podge. Some wood glue. Nautical robe. And finally, some Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. The first thing I'm going to do is line up my boxes in the order that I'm going to glue them together. And I'm going to mark these inside pieces with a little bit of washi tape. That will help note which pieces that I'm going to remove. Then I'm just going to use my heat gun. You could use a blow dryer as well. And through trial and error, I just heat up the glue on the inside and outside of these pieces. And finally, I get all of them removed on all four boxes. Then I'm going to use those pieces to rejoin my boxes together. The first thing I'm going to do is take one of the long pieces and apply hot glue and wood glue and attach it to the side of each set of two boxes. I'll turn it over towards the bottom and I'll connect another piece to keep it all together. At first, I'm just putting two sets together. And now I'll do the same thing to the second set of boxes as well. Only this time I started with the bottom and then finished with the side. And while it is still in two big pieces, I'm going to go ahead and paint the bottom, the sides, all of the little nooks and crannies with this plaster chalk paint. It will take two coats to get good coverage. This is the calendar that I'm going to use. I've chosen this page that says, Bless Our Nest. And I'm going to go in with my scissors and fussy cut around it. Now I'm joining my two large pieces together. I used a couple of those side pieces that I took off and I trimmed them up with my cutter and I'm going to go in and secure the bottom. Now I'm going to mimic what's in my calendar piece here by drawing those lines out to the side exactly where they are on the cutout. And then I'm going to go in and smudge it with my fingers to give it kind of that same feel as this calendar piece. And now I'm going in with Mod Podge and I'm going to give it two good coats. Of course, I will let it dry in between. And then once it's dry, I'm going to place down my calendar piece, put my heat mat over it, and use my iron to reactivate the Mod Podge. I love this technique for thin paper. And now we'll go in with a top coat of Mod Podge as well and seal our page completely. I'm going to use this nautical rope from the Dollar Tree to make handles for my tray. They'll just be decorative, not really fully functional. I'm going to tie a knot in one end, and then I'll cut off about nine inches. And that seemed to be the perfect size to tie another knot in the second end, and then go in and glue it to the end of my tray on both sides. And there's our finished piece. I think it's going to look so cute on my coffee bar in my kitchen. Hey y'all, it's Kay and Trish from Crafting Cousins. Thanks to all of you, we were able to go on through to week two and are part of the top six in the new design competition, Creative Champion, being hosted by Heidi Sambel over at Heidi Sambel DIY. This week, the theme was Dollar Tree. We could only use Dollar Tree items and a little paint to make all of our projects with. This beautiful trellis garden chair is the project that we submitted. To see how we made our chair from the Dollar Tree trellis, follow the link in the description box below to Heidi's video that will have all six projects for you to view and vote for your favorite. After you've watched Heidi's video, we hope that you will follow her link to her website where you will be able to vote for your favorite project. Voting is only open from Friday, March 12th at 1 p.m. Eastern until Sunday, March 14th at midnight. On Monday, March 15th, Heidi will announce which four channels will move forward to week three of the competition based on your votes. Each person is only allowed to vote one time, so make sure you choose your favorite project carefully. This video is also part of a friend hop. 
with all of the other channels still competing in the competition. We have three more DIYs coming up for you, and we will have a link in our description box below for you to be able to hop on over to the next channel and see what they created. Please note that YouTube has been having issues with links, so we will add the link to the hop to Heidi's video and to the voting website in our comment section for your convenience. We cannot thank you all enough for the support you showed us in round one and for all the support and love you continually give us. Y'all truly mean the world to us. Now, let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use one of these little Dollar Tree terracotta pots. These are the larger ones that come two to a pack a terracotta saucer, you only get one of these, one of these little birds, some florals, I haven't decided which ones yet, some chalk paint, I'll be using ballet slipper pink and white, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint my little pot and my saucer. I'm going to be using this chalk paint in the color ballet slipper pink and I will be painting all of it. I'm going to paint the inside and the outside, the top and the bottom of the saucer. I do see that little crack in my pot. Um, the other one didn't have one of those cracks, but I already used it in another project and it doesn't really matter on this one because the saucer is going to cover it up anyway. This paint dries really fast on this terracotta. It kind of soaks it up and that's a good thing when you need your project in a hurry. <laughs> and I did again paint the inside of this pot. It will be sitting upside down and you won't see it, but I have a thing about my projects being finished. So I want to make sure that if someone picks it up, it looks good on the inside as well. Now we are just going to attach our pot to our saucer with a little bit of hot glue right there in the middle at the bottom. Now I'm going to take some of my white Waverly chalk paint and this chunky brush that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to do some heavy distressing on it. I'm using this white to kind of soften out my pink and make it where it doesn't look quite so perfect. I did use a heavy hand on this and then I decided that I wanted some of that terracotta to pop out as well. So I grabbed a piece of sandpaper. Yep, I finally <laughs> got some more of it. And I just went over the edges and showed a little bit of my terracotta. Now we are going to decorate our bird bath. I want to use this little bird. I love this pink and blue one. And I'm going to use some of this pretty little baby's breath and these little pink flowers. Our Dollar Tree has really stepped up their game when it comes to their florals this year. And they are just so pretty and soft. I loved how the baby's breath and the flowers looked with this tiny little bird. I just kept cutting pieces off of it and gluing them on and just kind of surrounding my bird and giving her a nice little perch to sit on. Once I finished with the top, I moved on to the bottom. I want to decorate it too. And I used that same baby's breath and those little pink flowers. And I just cut them off and I kept gluing them on. Now, I didn't really have a rhyme or reason for this. I just kind of clipped pieces and glued them where I thought it needed something. And I was really happy with how it all came together using just these small pieces. And there's our finished project. I love how this piece turned out. It's so springy and so pretty, and it's very easy to make. I ended up putting it in my office so I would have a little bit of spring while I'm working. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you're new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the red subscribe below. Make sure you ring the bell when it comes up and you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload videos three days per week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Kay. The theme for these projects, of course, is Dollar Tree items. I'm going to use two of these bamboo wreaths that I got from the Dollar Tree. Some zip ties some greenery, 
And finally, a few roses and my hot glue gun. The first thing I'm going to do is take two zip ties and apply them to the side of my wreath. But before I close them tightly, I'm going to place another zip tie inside the loop. And then I'll just pull those tight and cut off the excess with my wire cutters. Then I'll turn it around on the other side and do the exact same thing. Two more zip ties with a zip tie inside. And there you can see the result. And now I'm going to take my tin snips and I'm going to cut between the two zip ties. I want to cut this wreath into two parts. When I make the cut, I seal it with my hot glue. I give it a nice generous coat so that it doesn't come unraveled. And now I'm cutting the second side and I'm going to do the same thing. And then I'm going to soak these branches in water for at least two hours. Here I am sealing the ends of the second one. And now they have soaked in water and I'm going to attach them to the top of my first wreath. I am turning them into bunny ears. I just pull them as tight as I can and use my pliers to make sure they're really tight and then cut off the excess with my wire cutters. And here I am doing the second bunny ear. It did take a little muscle, but it wasn't that hard. And now I'm going in with my florals. I'm going to start with this leaf right in the middle and a big pink rose. And then I'm just going to apply some white roses to either side and then a few more pink. I did try to use the yellow ones, but they kept falling apart. And finally, I'll just go in with a little bit of this greenery from this floral spray. And that will just give a little more color and a little more depth and dimension to our wreath. And now I'm taking that chenille stem and I'm going to twist it in the back so we have a holder so we can hang our wreath on the door. And there it is, that's the finished project. I love this one so much. It was quick and easy and less than $3. And there it is on my wall. Happy crafting, y'all. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, it's Trish. I saw this picture of this mirror on the Kirkland's website and I really like the mirror, but I really don't like the price. We're going to try to make something with the same feel as this, just using Dollar Tree items. We're going to use this rectangular mirror, this sign I had left over from Christmas, some wood planks, some twine, some wood glue, some paper tape, Waverly chalk paint, I'm not sure which colors yet, a piece of this project board, my four inch table saw from Harbor Freight, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. After I took the hanger off the sign, I removed the mirror from the frame. We don't need the frame. Then I just kind of center up my mirror on my sign, and I take these little planks and lay them out to see how I'm going to need to cut them. I knew I would need to cut them down. I was actually hoping that I would only have to use one plank on each of the sides of these, but it was just a little too small. But I'm cutting off a piece of two of my planks from the bottom, so I can use that piece to cut a piece to fill in that gap. So I just make some little marks and then I take my ruler and I draw some lines where these need to be cut. I was gonna have to cut two pieces off of each one, so we're gonna make those lines. Now I'm gonna grab my four inch table saw from Harbor Freight and make my cuts. We get a lot of questions about this saw. 
I will put a link to where we reviewed it up in the cards and I'll put a link to Harbor Freight in the description box below. Now we're going to take our little wood pieces that we cut and I'm just going to use a fingernail file from the Dollar Tree and sand off these edges. I could have used sandpaper but this worked just great. Now I'm going to paint all of my wood pieces on the front and the back and I'm also going to paint the back of my sign. I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in the color Silver Linings. The piece from Kirkland's, all the little pieces around that mirror were painted differently, but I am going to paint mine all pretty much the same. I want it to be kind of consistent, but I will be making it look weathered and worn. So once my silver lining paint was dry, I grabbed my ink chalk paint and my plaster chalk paint with a chunky brush and I just kind of went over these and worked them in until it looked like weathered wood. Now we're going to attach our mirror to our sign using a little bit of hot glue and some wood glue. When I put that mirror down on that sign, I realized that there was going to be a gap between the mirror and the sign and my wood planks were not going to lay on there correctly. So I grabbed this project board from the Dollar Tree and I measured out the pieces to fit around that mirror and then I cut them out with my utility knife. Now we're just going to glue them down around our mirror using some hot glue and that fixes that gap. We can take our wood pieces and glue those down. I did only put just the edge of the wood around the lip of the mirror. I didn't want to cover too much of it. Now I'm going to take my silver lining paint and fill in this cardboard on the back of my mirror. If y'all have been with us for a while, you know I can't stand an unfinished back on my project, so I had to give this some paint. To make a hanger for our mirror, I'm going to use a little bit of twine. I tied a knot into each end and then cover it with some paper tape. And this just gives it an extra hold. Now I'm going to use some of my paint and go over that paper tape to make it blend into the back of my mirror. And there's our finished piece. Y'all, it's really hard to take a picture of a mirror. <laughs> I did not realize this until I tried. I'm pretty happy with how this piece turned out. There is ours compared to the Kirkland's. We saved $196. Of course, ours is nowhere near as big as the Kirkland's piece, but I am really happy with how it turned out. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday morning. Bye y'all!